welcome to Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, oh, Hawaii. Thank you. I want to express my sincere appreciation to all who planned this year's Remembrance Walk, all of you who participated, and all of you who are gathered here today. We're fortunate to live in Hawaii, a place known around the world for its beauty, its people, and its culture. And although we're located thousands of miles away, we felt the unbearable pain of Hawaii families living loved ones and dear friends. The lives lost on September 11th, 2001. They included Heather Ho, Richard Y.C. Lee, Patricia Colander, is that correct, Colodner? Who worked in the World Trade Center, and Miley Holly, who was there attending a conference and Christine Snyder and Georgine Rose Corrigan who were aboard the plane that crashed near Pittsburgh. These victims were members of our community. Let us remember them today as we reflect on one of the most tragic days our nation has ever experienced. We must not forget how the terrorist attacks shook the nation to its cause. But the horrific events of that day also brought out the very best in our humanity. Like those who rushed towards the burning buildings to save lives, or those who led others to safety or provided care so desperately needed, or those who scoured through mountains of rubble for survivors in the hopes that some would survive, and those who fought back on a doomed airplane, or those who scrambled on land and in the air to protect us and continue to do so today. They all represent heroism under fire, which is the true legacy of that day. 11 years ago. We honor their bravery and their sacrifices today as we remember all of those who perished. That is why we've come here today as one community because we care. We are here together to honor the fallen, to express our deep sorrow, sorrow and to show our humble appreciation for all the sacrifices that have been made. Let us not forget how lucky we are to live in the United States, a land that is free. I'm going to give you a brief personal perspective uh, not to show what I was doing in particular, but to show the events because I happened to be involved with them because I was on the mainland. I was in Detroit and I was speaking to them about tourism in Detroit. And some people don't believe that tourism and Detroit can go hand in hand, but with their new gambling industry, in fact, they have a very healthy tourism uh, industry and they asked me to be there. And I was there with mostly police officers talking about crimes and tourism and how to take care of it. We all heard while we were in the seminars that we were about to give the events that happened and people quickly migrated to basically televisions to see what was going on. Frankly, many of the people who were there had people who lived and worked in the trade centers, uh, worked in the trade centers or lived in the area, including myself. My brother usually commuted through the trade center to get to work in Manhattan. It was very clear after a short while, after the second one struck, that this was an attack on the country, and everybody started talking about it. They mustered the police department from that point right there that was in the room with us, and they went out essentially on duty. Because I was there, they had actually put guards on me for reasons I can't particularly understand, but they did. And then they suggested that they give me a gun so that I could help uh, protect uh, the citizens. And the thought of me with a gun didn't strike me as going hand in hand with protecting anybody. So uh, I politely declined, but they followed me around for the next couple of days to the point where, since I couldn't, they closed the sky so I couldn't get back home. Uh, I had called that morning to Judy before anybody else had pretty much heard about what was going on and told her not to send the kids to school that day uh, as a result of what had happened there uh, and had touched so deeply so many people on the mainland who felt the immediate shock and the fear of retribution that might go even further. After having spent that time there, I decided that it was time for me to stop being sort of like a third arm, and so I got in my car and I drove to my brother's home, which is within a few miles of a very easy precipice that looks over directly to New York City. As we were looking at the city, you could see the plume, you could see it going across the, the sky, and the city looked, quite frankly, for those of us who were acquainted with its skyline, it looked injured, uh, and it looked harmed, and it looked old. And you could see the fires, and you could see the plume going across Manhattan. Uh, and it was something very difficult to look at if you were accustomed to a different skyline. It became apparent from what we were hearing on the news that people were making this incredibly difficult choice, uh, whether to be consumed by fire or to leap to their death. Uh, I am, I think all human beings are afraid of fire. 
and I think it's remarkable that the, the first responders, the EMS, the fire department, the policemen, they're so courageous in their actions, confronting those things that are unnatural to human beings, and yet doing it with remarkable reserve, with professionalism and dignity, and absolute unbridled amounts of courage. When we saw the people who were coming off of the walls, coming off of the buildings, it was very difficult for anybody to watch. But to some extent, we all would put ourselves in that circumstances and think of what we would do. And since I am both terrified of fire, as all humans are, and also somebody who's very nervous about heights, and on and on again, I thought, how could people have been forced to make that type of choice? And yet they did. And they did so, in many ways, people were saved from having to do that by the first responders who were there. But they remained there while this catastrophe occurred, which is why so many of them lost their lives. Within a couple of days, uh, that evening, my brother and I had decided, because we were sort of all pent up with nervous energy, uh, we wanted to be able to do something physical to get it, to give us some relief. Uh, we walked up to a, a bluff that was uh, behind, uh, close to my brother's home. And unsuspecting, right at the time of sunset, uh, as the sunset went down, it reflected off of, off of all of the buildings in Manhattan and went into the plume that was in the sky and it basically looked like the entire city was on fire. And uh, again, it was difficult for us to watch that and difficult for us to think about how much had been lost and how many lives had been taken. Two days later, the first plane to leave Newark, New Jersey to head back to Honolulu, uh, I was lucky enough to get on. Uh, the day before, my brother had asked me if I wanted to go into Manhattan with him. He was going in to go to work. And I said, I don't really think it would be appropriate for me to be uh, going into the site at that time. They did not need me there. And frankly, it smacked of uh, some sort of perverse, uh, to my mind, a perverse thing to do, considering the gravity of what happened. I'm glad that I made that decision. Uh, and I still think that it was the right one. When I got on the plane, it was sort of interesting. On the ground, somebody had come up and spoke to me and said, uh, it's so nice to see you here. Uh, and what are they going to do about the news tonight in Honolulu? So once again, I had been mistaken for Howard Shevsky uh, on that side of the Atlantic, and that, believe it or not, brought me some small measure of comfort. When we got off the ground, and it had been difficult to do because there had been uh, a shutdown of the metro system, uh, once again, there had been a threat. People had called in with more bomb scares. I don't know why anybody would do that under those circumstances. So they closed down. Uh, the way to get there, I walked over to the place where I was getting on the airplane, got on, and it was fairly empty. I think people were afraid to get into the sky. And they gave us a very specific instructions. We are going to go, we're going to head right towards the Trade Center, we're going to bank left, uh, that's what we expect to do, and you will see as we go, we will be going directly across uh, the site of the Trade Center. Uh, and so we got up, we turned around, and from the plane you could see the devastation on the ground, see the flames, you can see the plume, uh, and we turned and we put it to our backs. But again, it was something that was never going to be forgotten. Uh, I hope we never go through a day like that again. Uh, I know they went through a day like that similarly here with uh, World War II commencing in Pearl Harbor. But I believe that everybody being here today remembering solemnly and seeing how far we've come as a country and essentially as a world since that terrible time in the global fight against terrorism, I think is a remarkable accomplishment to the sturdiness of our resolve, the courage of our, uh, our intentions, and our unfailing loyalty to this country and to those who have saved us and who continue to help it make great, many of whom are represented here uh, by the offices and the agencies uh, that they are a part of. I want to thank you all for coming tonight. I want to thank you for being a part of this celebration. I don't think celebration is it. To some extent, it's a celebration of what's happened since then. But really, we want to remember, and I know we won't forget. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you, Mayor Carlisle. Now it's time for us to post the colors. <laughs>